This is the Algebra 1 Summer School, Unit 4, Lesson 1, Topic 1. All right, there's going to be a lot here because we have exponent rules to talk about this time. So we're going to start with multiplying um, properties, multiplication properties, I'm sorry, of exponents. So we're going to start with multiplying with the same base. Now the rule here for when you have numbers that you're multiplying that have the same base, meaning that it's the same letter or number, on the bottom of the term, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to end up adding their exponents together. Okay? So, multiplying algebraic expressions. Let's just jump right in. We're going to start here. I have 4 z to the 5th times 9z to the 12th. Now, the 4 and the 9 do not have an exponent. But because there's a multiplication symbol in the middle, I multiply 4 times 9, which is 36, and now I look at the z. The z is the same base. Because there's a z with exponents, I end up adding those exponents together. 5 plus 12 is 17. So this simplifies to 36, z to the 17th power. Same idea with number 2. I always start by multiplying the numbers together. 2 times 9 times 3. Okay. 2 times 9 times 3 is 54. Now I deal with the A's. I have A, B, and A. Well, okay, so I only want to look at the A's to start. So I have A. Now there's a little pretend 1, an invisible 1 sitting here. So I have A to the 1st and A to the 2nd. I'm not going to look at the B yet, but A to the 2nd. 1 plus 2 is 3, so that's 54 A to the 3rd. And finally, there's nothing that this B can combine with, so he's just going to say B to the 4th. Number 3, I start the same way. I start by multiplying the numbers on the outside together, just the number part. 5 times 3 is 15. Now I deal with the variables. It looks like here I only have X, X, and X. So the exponents on those X's are 4, 9, and 1. When I add 4 plus 9 plus 1, I get x to the 14. All right, last one here. Looks like I have c's and d's. I'm going to start by rearranging this just so it looks a little better. I'm going to have negative 4 times 7 times 2. Then I'm going to do the c's next. c to the 3rd times c to the negative 2nd. And then the d's, d to the 2nd. So I'm going to start now by multiplying the numbers together. Negative 4 times 7 times 2. Those multiply to be negative 56. Then I can look at the C's. They have like bases. I add 3 plus negative 2, which gives me C to the 1st. And then finally, the D has nothing to combine with, so that D to the 2nd is going to stay the same. And that is your final answer. So multiplying with the same base isn't so bad. You multiply the numbers and then add the exponents for the variables that are the same. There's even more multiplication powers here. This is multiplication raising a power to a power. So sometimes I have a number in parentheses with an exponent, but then there's another exponent on the outside. Well, the rule here is that you multiply those exponents together. So some really simple examples. Number one here n to the 4th to the 7th. I end up multiplying 4 times 7, which would give me n to the 28th power. Same with number 2. Even though they are fractions, I go ahead and I'm going to multiply 1 half times 1 fourth. 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So that's x to the 1 eighth. Don't be scared of the fractions. Just do the computation. Yes, you can use your calculator. Now let's put the first two ideas together. Power to a power and multiplying with the same base. When that situation arises, I always want to deal with the power to a power start part first. I'm going to get rid of parentheses. So y to the 5 over 2 to the second. Just as the last example, yes, there's a fraction, but you go ahead and multiply it anyways. 5 over 2 times 2 ends up being y to the 5th like that part, but I still have y to the third from over here come down. 
Well, those are the same bases. They're both y. So I can go ahead and add their exponents together and get y to the 8 as my final answer. All right, same strategy over on this problem. I do power to a power first. I first multiply 6 times 4, which is 24. So I have x to the 24. I still have to deal with that x squared. But now, because the two x's are sitting next to each other, they have the same base, I go ahead and add their exponents to get x to the 26. All right. Even more power to a power next. This time, it's still power to a power, but there might be multiple terms inside the parentheses. I like to think of this kind of like distributed. All right, what you're going to do here is you're going to take that exponent and make it the exponent to both numbers inside the parentheses. So you would get a to the n and b to the n in that example. So let's try this here. I have 5x cubed to the second power. So that exponent of 2, it has to go to the 5 and to the x cubed. Now I'm going to write this out in a couple steps this time. I'm going to have 5 squared times x cubed squared. So I'm squaring both terms. Well, 5 squared, you should know, is 25. And then here I do power to a power. 3 times 2 is x to the 6. So that's your final answer there, 25x to the 6. Same idea, number 2. I take that exponent of 3, I'm going to distribute it to the 7 and to the m. So I'll have 7 to the 3rd times m to the 9th to the 3rd. Using your calculator, you can probably figure out that 7 to the 3rd is 343. And then I go ahead and do power to power and multiply 9 times 3 here. Get m to the 27. Alright, so that's your final answer. Number 3 is very similar again. I'm going to take the exponent of 4 and distribute it to the 2 and to the x. So you end up with 2 to the 4 times x to the 4. Now there's no other power to power I have to do here. So I go ahead and figure out 2 to the 4th equals 16, and x to the 4th doesn't change. So that just stays 16x to the 4th. Now finally, in number 4 here, I take the 2, I have 3g to the 4th squared. So I take the 2 and it goes to the 3 and to the g to the 4th. So I have 3 squared times g to the 4th squared. You should definitely know that 3 squared equals 9. And now for power to power, I multiply 4 times 2, which gives me g to the 8. Now let's do the same thing in the last four examples here. But these last four examples combine all of the rules together that we've done so far. Okay, so the first one, I want to get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to do all the power to a power first. In this first example, all I have is n to the 1 half to the 18. So I go ahead and simplify by multiplying 1 half times 18. 1 half times 18 is n to the 9. So that one's taken care of. Now, the next one's a little trickier. 4mn to the negative 2 thirds to the third. So what I do is I take the 3. It distributes to the 4 to the m and to the n. So I will have 4 to the third times m to the third times n to the negative 2 thirds to the third. All right. Let's stay with n to the ninth. And that stays the same. 4 to the third is 64. m to the third stays the same. And then I'm going to multiply this power to a power here. Negative 2 thirds times 3 is negative 2. So times n to the negative 2. And now we are almost done. Notice that there are a couple n's here. So what I'm going to end up doing is now add those exponents together. 
When I add those exponents together, I'm going to put the 64 first. 64, the end of the third stays the same. Add 9 minus 2 is n to the 7. That's your final answer. 64 n to the end of the second. 7. A lot more involved, but not super hard. All right, let's look at number 6 here. Same idea as the first one, there's just no fraction this time. So I'm going to start by power to a power here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So I at least start with x to the positive 4. That's nice. The next example, I distribute the 4 to the 3, the x, and the y. So I get times 3 to the 4, x to the 4, y to the 5th, 2 to the 4. Well, let's go ahead and let's put the number first. 3 to the 4th is 81. Okay. Then I have some x's, x to the 4th and x to the 4th. I end up being able to add those exponents together to get x to the 8th. And then up here, I do power to power, 5 times 4 is y to the 20th. And that would be the whole problem. All right, next one, number 7. I'm going to distribute the 4. It has to go to the 3 and to the C. So I have 3 to the 4 times C to the 5 halves to the 4 times, then I do C to the 2nd cubed. Well, the 2 and the 3 are the only exponents that they can multiply to be C to the 6. We just did 3 to the 4th and got that 3 to the 4th is 81. Now I can go ahead and multiply 5 over 2 times 4, okay, which is C to the 10th, and then I had C to the 6th. So when I go ahead now, I'm able to combine the C's because they're next to each other and have the same base to get 81 C to the 16th. That's your final answer there. Okay, one more. Not as hard as the others. It's just a lot of little steps. Alright, the 3 gets distributed to the 6, the A, and the B. So I get 6 cubed times A cubed times B cubed. Now I distribute the 2 to the 5 and the A. So then I have times 5 squared times A cubed well, let's simplify the numbers. 6 to the third, 6 to the third is 216. Right? And then the A to the third stays the same. B to the third stays the same. 5 squared is 25. I'm going to put that in front by the other number, 25. And then a to the third squared, that gives me a to the sixth. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to multiply the 25 and 216 together. That gives me 5,400. Then the a can combine. a to the third and a to the sixth is a to the ninth times b to the third. Okay. That's the whole answer. There's a lot of work there, but you can handle it. Now, these last two problems on the note, these are actually Ohio State test questions that apply to exponent rules. So I wanted to stick them on so we could talk about them. The first one says, select all the expressions that are equivalent to 9x to the 4th minus y squared. All right, so there's no super fantastic easy way to do this. Nothing super quick, but it's not really that hard. This problem actually takes us all the way back to unit one when we did multiplying binomials, but there's also exponent rules involved, which is why I saved the problem until now. Because we just did this exponent rule, you might be tempted to distribute the two. But the problem is we're not allowed to do that here because there is a minus sign in the middle of that problem. So what I have to do is remember that when I have a whole quantity squared, that's the same thing as 3x squared minus y times 
3x squared minus y. So I end up having to double distribute or FOIL this problem. So when I start, I have 3x squared times 3x squared. Well, let's see, the 3 times 3 is 9. x squared times x squared, we just talked about, is x to the 4th. Okay, well, so far it matches. Then I distribute the 3x squared to the y. It's negative, so it's minus 3x squared y. Same thing, negative y times 3x squared is, again, minus 3x squared y. And negative y times positive y is plus y squared. That actually isn't going to be equal, because if I look at these, negative 3 and negative 3 combine to be negative 6. So this actually does not end up being equal at all. So that means I can move on to the second problem. This is much more like the exponent rules we were just doing. This 2 gets distributed to the 3 and the x squared. So I have 3 squared, which is 9, multiply 2 times 2 to get x to the 4th. Then I just have minus y squared. That looks exactly like what I had up here. So that is an option. That's equal. Same idea with the next problem. I have the 9. Well, x squared squared, I multiply those exponents to get 9x to the 4th. And again, just minus y squared. So that one's equal as well. Next problem is the same exponent properties. I take the 2, it goes to the 9 and to the x squared. So I have 9 squared, which is 81x to the 4th, which I can already tell is not going to be equal. So that's 81x to the 4th minus y squared. Cross that guy off. That's not equivalent. Finally, this last problem looks in similar in process to the first. I'm going to double distribute. 3x squared times 3x squared. Okay, 3x squared times 3x squared is 9x to the fourth. 3x squared times negative y is negative 3x squared y. But now I have a positive y times 3x squared. So that's plus 3x squared y. And then positive y times negative y is negative y squared. Now, the cool thing about this problem is that we can see that negative 3xy, x squared y plus 3x squared y, those end up canceling off. So I end up with just 9x squared minus y squared, or 9x to the fourth, I'm sorry, which is, again, equivalent to what we wanted. So we have three choices that were the same and two that were different. All right, this last one is going to be much simpler than the first. I'm just going to erase a little work here. Which expression is equivalent to 8x to the third to the two-third power? All right, power to a power. I distribute the two-third to the 8 and to the x. So that's 8 to the two-thirds power times x to the third to the two-thirds power. Now, you probably don't know what x 8 to the two-thirds is. That's fine. You can type that into your calculator, and you end up getting 4. Then power to power, 3 times 2 thirds is just 2. And 4x squared is option A. All right, there is a lot of practice attached to this notes file. I want you to try all these problems. The solutions are on the last page. If you need help, there will be a practice video posted on Canvas.